Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to help you paint the paratrooper uniform that the Americans used during World War II. More specifically, this here is the uniform that was worn by Easy Company on D-Day. Basically, I'll be showing you how to use the paint set we've come up with to get this done. I will be using the figure that comes in that set, which is this radio operator. I've already painted his face and helmet to get us started because this video will focus on the uniform. To begin with, I want to show you the colour palette I'll be using for the uniform, the jackets and trousers to be precise. These are the colours I'll be using to paint the jacket, both the brighter areas and the shadows. I'm going to start with the base colour, but darken it with the shadow colour. This will make it easier for me later to do the outlines and the extreme shadows. I'm mixing the shadow colour and the base colour more or less 50-50, and this will be my starting colour. I will then start adding the second mix, my base colour, to this colour to brighten it bit by bit as we go. Right, let's start painting the jacket, just the jacket for now. I'm going to use a thick brush, no great care required at this stage, and the base colour. The goal is to get a solid colour all over the model. Now I have a dark colour, very similar to the base colour, on which I can easily work on some highlighting. To get those highlights done, I need to lighten the colour I used before, and paint less and less of the area I painted previously. Applying thin layers is key at this stage. So basically, the colour gets lighter and lighter, while the area I cover gets smaller and smaller. Little by little, you can see the figure starting to come to life. The final highlights are applied to properly outline all the details on the jacket. How much highlighting you apply will depend on your own personal taste, naturally. But at this scale, it's quite important to highlight all the details quite well. Bringing out the light certainly helps. So that's all the highlighting for the jacket done now. Another important part of the job is to apply shadows. To do that, I'm going to use the colour we made in the first step when I was explaining the colours and I'm going to use a very diluted version. Always make strokes away from the light towards the shadow. I'm going to start at the bottom of the jacket to make it a little darker. As I said, my brush strokes go towards the more hidden areas. Another important part of this shading work is to outline the shadows. Things like the pouches, the belt and other overlaying details need a shadow outline otherwise they will be lost. To do that I'm going to use this colour, brown black, just as it comes in the pot but quite diluted. Using this colour and quite a thin brush, I'm going to outline the areas in shadow. Like the pouches here and other overlaying details. Whenever you paint historic uniforms, you need to be careful with the details because a specific colour needs to be used for each one. In this case, for our radio operator, I'm going to paint the straps and the belts now and I will use this colour, Canvas Tone, 
to do just that. As always, I will start using a darkened version as my base colour. So now I'm starting to paint the straps, bit by bit. And now I'll start using lighter and lighter shades as we go. This will help me achieve volume and light. You should bear in mind that the straps are lighter at the top than at the bottom. And whenever possible, your brush strokes should move away from the shadow towards the light, or from the medium tone towards the light. Here I'm painting with the canvas tone colour straight from the pot. I've been adding it bit by bit to my base colour until I got to this tone, just as it comes from the pot. And as you can see, I'm painting less and less of the surface area. This will help create a sense of volume. I'm still applying light to the straps here and I'm also trying to outline the ridges on which the most light is falling. Now I'm using canvas tone as my base colour and the highlight colour is up to each one's personal taste. That said, at this scale, as I said before, I recommend exaggerating the light quite a bit because the pieces will probably end up on a gaming table. The straps and belts have been painted now. In order to further emphasise the volumes and so they can be seen more clearly, I'm going to paint the buttons in black first. Personally, I use a very thin brush for this, one that has lost a lot of bristles. The result I get is a perfect dot. I'll use the same brush and colour to mark where the belt and certain pouches come into contact with the other fabric on the jacket. All that's left now is to paint the buttons in a gold colour because they're made of brass. This is how to mix your colours. This is how our paratrooper is looking now. I've applied the base colour to the knee pads, the elbow pads, straps and pouches. I've lightened that base colour like I showed you on my palette and I'm going to get painting now. To begin with, I'm just going to paint general shapes without paying much attention to the wrinkles on the fabric. Now that I'm highlighting things, I'm starting to pay more and more attention to the wrinkles on the pads and the pouches. I've lightened the colour even more and I'm going to carry on. Now that the colour is much lighter, I will start to highlight the smaller details. Like the cords on these pouches, the elbow pads, the fabric wrinkles and the knee pads. The idea is to make sure that every detail on the figure can be seen properly. Having started with quite a dark colour, this shading work is practically already done. Here you can see how all the details are starting to jump out. At this point, for the knee pads and green parts of the uniform, 
I'm going to add the last bit of light and use this buff color to do just that. This is a very bright color that will let me do some outlining and add some bright points of light. This is so the areas where the light falls most are nice and bright and the various different details can be easily told apart. The boots worn by American paratroopers have a very unique colour, highly characteristic of this type of uniform. To recreate that colour, As usual, I've started with my base colour and darkened it with brown black. This means I can start with this dark reddish brown colour and create highlights later on as I go. As I did on the rest of the figure, I'm going to gradually lighten the colour I use and paint each part of the boot separately. This will help me fade the different shades into one another and all the details on the boot will become apparent. <laughs> 